You're well, on. good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, as we light the second candle of love and peace. If you do have any announcements or any prayer requests or joy or concerns, I would ask that you share them with Morgan and or Barb or Beth, and they'll be sure that we get them. But we do want to remember those that we do know. So let's open the service with a word of prayer. Dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for our church family. We pray for those who we know have had ongoing medical conditions that you would be with them during this trying time, whether it be cancer, whether it be any issue. I just pray that you'll help them to get to their doctor's appointments to be just on the road of recovery. For those additional needs, those unspoken requests that are out there, I pray that you know our hearts and that you would just hear our prayer at this time, this season. And now let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we're going to sing Angels We Have Heard on High. If you got this sent to you, you do have the words to three verses. So join me in singing Angels We Have Heard on High. Yeah. 
If you join me in our call to worship, come once more with eager longing to receive the promises of God. Out of the trying times of our lives, we gather together with joy and gladness. Happy are those whose help is found in God, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Our God who made heaven and earth and all that is in them, keeps faith forever within us. He sets the prisoners free and brings healing to all those who seek him. The Lord lifts up those who are humble and watches over the afflicted. He upholds the orphan and the widow. Our God gives justice for the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Come once more with eager longing and bless the holy name of our God. I come today with open hearts to receive the gifts of hope, love, and joy. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you that Jesus brought love into our world. You broke down the barriers when you crept in beside us. In Jesus, your hands touched us. You opened our eyes to see how to love others. Here in the company of our neighbor, whom we know, and the stranger in our midst, we ask to love as Jesus loved. Make this place in time when heaven and earth become one, a place where love abides. Amen. Well, at this time, I have Beth and Dwayne Creed with us tonight to light the Advent wreath. Last week was hope. This week is the candle of love and peace. Today we relight the candle of hope. With Christians around the world, we use this light to help us prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of God's Son. Now we light the candle for the second Sunday of Advent. This is the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. Today we light the candle of hope. With Christmas around the world, we use this light to help us pre From the prophet Isaiah, for a child has been born, for us a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And from the Gospel of John, John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, may peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Thank you, Dwayne. And it's a good thing that he's skinny and he can fit between the candles and not catch on fire and not knock over the Christmas tree. Our scripture reading today is coming from Psalm 85, verse 8 through 13. And it says, Show us, Lord, your mercy. Grant us your salvation. I will listen for what God the Lord has to say. Surely he will speak of peace to his people and to his faithful. May they not turn to foolishness. Near indeed is his salvation for those who fear him. Glory will dwell in our land. Love and truth will meet, justice and peace will kiss. Truth will spring from the earth, justice will look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will grant his bounty, our land will yield its produce, justice will march before him and make a way for his footsteps. And then our New Testament reading is today from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 18. Therefore, I too, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and for your love for all the holy ones, do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge for him. 
May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And may God add the blessing to the reading of his word today. And next we're going to sing a faithful common hymn called Heart the Herald Angel Sings. We're going to sing two verses of that today. Heart the Herald Angel Sings. as we continue with the series on Advent. As we said earlier, this week we lit the love or the peace candle. And Christmas is about one simple thing that made the dip biggest difference in the lives of people all over the world from one moment in time and now and forever into the future. God's love for you and me our kids, our families, our neighbors, our co-workers, the people who live across the town, people who live across the street. But that includes people who live halfway around the world. It's God's love. God's love for the world of people he created and his longing to have us love him. Love that brought Jesus Christ, God down to earth as a little baby and what we now celebrate this time of year is Christmas. Love and peace are words that are used in so many different ways. And perhaps we've lost sight of the depth of its meaning. In the last few days, many of us may have said something like, I love you to your spouse, to your parents. Some of you really love your morning cup of coffee. You love your dog, your cat, or a book that you're reading. And as I've been thinking about Advent and love and peace, the first thing that came to my mind when I think of peace is everything that happened in the 70s. Peace with psychedelic colors. I think on half of my notebook covers, we drew a peace sign. I don't know why. We, I didn't know what it meant, but... It's not that kind of love and peace that we're talking about today, but of God's love. Thoughts about Christmas and what it means to people in different situations and in different places. Just like the whole, wor whole, whole word, peace or love, all have different meanings. 
But when we think of Christmas, we think of the greatest gift of all, that God sent his son into the world to save the world from ourselves. But I wonder what Christmas means to a mother who has lost her husband this year, who must take care of her children working every day, never quite getting everything done, hardly making ends meet. What does Christmas mean to her this year? I wonder what Christmas means to the little man in Belize living in a hut, a small structure, who knows nothing of shopping malls or Christmas trees. What does Christmas mean to him? I wonder what it means to little children with very little to eat, but still have a sparkle in their eyes that look up and wonder as they walk past a church lit up at night or a Christmas tree. What does Christmas mean to them? I wonder what it means to missionaries who are halfway around the world away from their friends and family, who are sacrificing so much to spread the good news of God's love. What does it mean to them? I'm sure that it means different things to different people. Peace. To merchants, it's the busiest time of the year. And in 2020, for those business owners, it's the scariest time of the year. Stores can't stay open longer. They're not able to hire extra people to accommodate all the shoppers they would have had. A time that used to mean more profit, hopefully enough profits to get them through the lean times, just aren't happening this year. When in reality, they've seen lean times for the last 10 months. For many of us though, Christmas is a time of fun and parties, but not so much this year. For children though, it's a time of impatience, with time seeming to pass so slow as they wait for Christmas morning. But sometimes I get the feeling that we're like the folks who decide to throw a party to honor a special guest. They send out invitations, they decorate the hall and have food catered. The people come and gather for that party, but to their surprise, the guest of honor wasn't there. Until finally they realize the embarrassing discovery that no one invited the guest of honor. And I wonder if that's what happens to us at Christmas time. We go through all the decorating, buying presents, preparing meals, but somehow we forget to invite the honored guest. Sometimes families try to overcome that by putting an extra plate at their Christmas table for Jesus, calling Jesus his birthday party, Christmas time his birthday party. I remember one Christmas my sister, on her way back to Worcester, said to one of her sons, asked if he got everything that he wanted for Christmas, and he answered by saying no, and proceeded to tell her what he didn't get. And I sometimes wonder if that's how Jesus feels. He, we spend so much time worrying about the turkey, battles in the parking lots, the lines in the stores, the regifting, or going into debt or sending cards to people, we worry about so much, but we forget to invite the honored guest. When Christmas is about one simple thing that made the biggest difference in the lives of people all over the world, God's love for you and me, our kids, our families, our neighbors. Whose love? God's love. And I think it's ironic that we celebrate his birthday when he's the one who gave us the greatest gift of all. Love that brought Jesus down to this earth as a little baby and what we now celebrate is Christmas. So does it mean that we shouldn't celebrate Christmas the way we do? I'm not saying that at all. But I do think it's important that we remember the real meaning of the season whose birthday party it is, and what God wants from us. 
is our time and for us to be kind to others, for us to give to others those simple gifts that we talked about of hope and love and peace. If we give those gifts away, we will reap much greater gifts. Will you receive the gift of his love this year for Christmas? Will you receive the gift of his peace, of his hope? 2020 has been a year of less for so many, and in so many ways. 2020 has been a year of loss for many of jobs, of income, of life. And as the old song goes, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Love and peace, as we celebrate them this week, are free to give, just as God's love is free to all who believe. Jesus is here, he is coming, and he's waiting for all of us because he loves you and me. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, as we come to you this week, we do pray that we would be more loving, that we would find your peace, that we would be aware of the many great blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And even though 2020 has been lean, we do pray that you will help us to count our blessings and that we would just receive your peace and your love to a greater extent this week, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a good week. We will keep you posted on what's going on next week with Lorraine County and the decision. I know that it's, I'm getting as impatient as everybody else is. I want to be together. I want us to sing those hymns those Christmas carols, and enjoy the reason of the season because of each and every one of you. So God bless you. Have a good week. And until we meet again.